Okay, so the first part is about the safety issues. Okay, in the SBA, we are going to uh, assess your safety measurements. First of all, you should have your lab coat. Remember, don't roll your sleeves. Okay, if you roll your sleeves during the SBA, then mark will be deducted. Second one okay, will be your safety goggles. Okay, everyone should have your safety goggles on during the whole process. And the third one will be the position of the titration setup. So you should see that okay, right now the titration, the stand and clamp. The clamp, okay, the stand right here will be at the back. Okay. When you're doing the performance, uh, performing the titrations, your conical flask, okay, and your hand, your left hand and right hand, right here should be clear. You should not having the stand, okay, either on the left hand side or on the right hand side. Because if you're doing like that, when you perform the titration, it will completely block your activities. And the last one is about the placing the apparatus. When the burette and pipette is not using, they should be clamped well on this stand and clamp, but not placing on the table. Right, other reminders for you would be the markers to label the apparatus. So when you are using the apparatus like beakers, better you have to label what are the chemicals going to be held here. So for example, right here, this one we're going to have HNO3, then we'll use a permanent marker writing on the surface of the beaker. Do remember, you have to write on the glass, but not the white part okay, on the beaker. So, you just need to write it down, HNO3, for example, nitric acid, and the other one, okay, just write down Na2CO3. Again, during the SPA, if I didn't see, and if, you, if I see that your beaker, there is no mark or labels on it, the mark will be deducted. Last one is about the white tile. You should have a white tile put it on the stand and clamp, okay, in order to have a better observations of the color. We right, now talk about how to wash the apparatus. For the pipette, okay, because there's two holes, okay, like what I taught you, okay, we need two kinds of chemicals to wash it. First of all, we need to use water, okay, to rinse it first, and then afterward, we're going to use a chemical to hold, which is sodium carbonate. So remember, during the washing process, we don't want the liquid after getting into the pipette and flow it back to liquid, because the dirt in the pipette it may contaminate our stock. So whenever we Take up the liquid here, the solution, whatever is water or the sodium carbonate. We have to hold it and then try to put it back into the sink to wash it away. Okay. So first of all, it will be the water. Remember, you should use your index fingers to cover the top, okay, to hold the solutions. So right now we put the pipette into the conical flask, uh, into the beaker, and then we use water to wash it first. After the liquid go up to half bulk, you can control it, hold it up, and make it horizontal. Now we will rotate the pipette to rinse the inner part of the pipette. You may also want to wash the top part away of the pipette like this as well. After you wash it, you rotate it, you can go to the sink, okay, and then let the water to drain off like this. At the same time, you can shake it a bit to make sure the dirt inside or the chemical we have used to rinse it away. So this is the first time using water to rinse the pipettes. As we have some water inside the pipette, if we take the solution and use it right now, it may have a dilution process. So what we need to do, we have to use the chemical to be used and I use this chemical to rinse away this water once more time. But as I said before, after the liquid getting into the pipette, don't let those liquid get back into the beaker again. Because if we do like that, we will ruin 
will uh, contaminate or dilute the solution in the sodium carbonate, the stock right here. So, put the pipette into it, take up some solutions until half pop, and then we take it out, make it horizontal, and then rinse it. Rinse it. I'm rotating it. And when we drain it off, we shake it a bit. As we're using some weak base and also weak acid, actually both of them, it will be okay for you to drain it into the sink. So this one, it will consider as clean pipette and then you can use it afterward. For burette, okay, remember it's a little bit different from a pipette. Okay, you have a tape right here. Whenever you try to fill the burette, make sure this one is closed. Okay, so again, this one has two opening. Okay, so for us to memorize, remember we we'll use DI water to rinse it first, and then afterward we're going to use the chemical to be used. This time we're using nitric acid. So make sure the tape is closed right now. We try to use water to fill it up. Like the red, I like the pipette, we're going to feel like half, half of the burette. So right now, okay, we feel half of it, okay, and then we get close to the sink. What we need to do is open the tape, let the water run from it to rinse the jet off. And at the same time, we'll shake it a bit. And in other words, we'll close it. And we'll do exactly like the pipettes. We, we place, it, place it horizontal and normally we have the opening or we're close to the sink so that when the water flows out okay, it's still be in the sink. So when you place the horizontal we rotate a bit to clean the inner wall of it. Okay, if you find that it's sufficient we'll pour it and open the tape let the last drop flowing out from here into the sink. Out of that, now we're going to do the same for the nitric acid. Okay, this time, remember again, make sure the tape is closed. Okay, otherwise, when you pour the solution, the liquid will flow at the other end. Okay, now what we need to do, we pour the nitric acid into it again, like half fill will be good. Okay, first, first what we need to do, okay, we have to rinse the jet, so open it, okay, near the same part, okay, and then the liquid will flow out, and then shake it a little bit, and then close it again. Okay, next, okay, we're going to rinse the inner part of the burette, okay, remember, make sure the opening, okay, is close to the burette, so that when the liquid coming out, it can get into the sink. Place it horizontal. Rotate it a bit to clean the inner part. When you think that is enough, okay, you pour the liquid into the sink and open to take care to release the last drop into the sink. So after all this, okay, you can now close the tape and then fill the burette okay, with the nitric acid. After you fill the burette, okay, this part, the lower part, the jet, okay, you may see that there are some bubbles or one big bubbles in the jet. Okay. If you keep these bubbles, it may affect your titration process. So remember, after you fill the burette, you have to make sure flush the bubbles out from the jet. How to do that? Okay, what you need to do is get close to the sink, open, let the liquid coming out, and then if you find the bubbles here, you just shake it a bit. And the bubbles normally it will come in out. After that, you just close the tape and check it one more time. When you see there is no bubbles, then actually this burette is well filled. Okay? What you need to do is just clamp it back onto the standard clamp. <laughs> Titrations. 
first of all, you have to fill the barrette with the chemical. So, first of all, you have to take it down. Never pull the solutions over your head like this. So, make sure the tape is closed. And then now you can pull the HNO3 into the barrette carefully. Wherever you feel the direct, okay, you can now read the readings. Okay, take the initial reading. Now you can see that okay, it's about 5.10. Okay, remember, okay, for the reading that I take, it has to be two decimal places. So the first decimal places you can read from the direct. But for the second one, this is an estimate one. You have to estimate it on your own. So after you take the readings and put it down in your lab, on your lab worksheets, then you can mount it again onto the clamp. So remember the position of the barrette, okay? It can't be too low, try this one. It can't be too low, and also it can't be too high. Because when it is too high, okay, the liquid, it will spill in out, and then the titrate cannot get into the conical flux. So what is the best position? It have to be the jet of the barrette. The jet of the barrette, it have to be inside the neck of the conical flux. So when you try to put the conical flux into it, it will be a little bit like this. So that make sure all the titrate from the barrette, it will be get into the conical flux. So after filling the barrette, next we're going to fill the conical flux. For the conical flux, we're going to use sodium carbonate. So, take out the burette from the clamp, like that. And then right now, okay, remember, you should use your index fingers to cover the top, but not the thumb. Or if you have better control, use your index fingers to cover it. And remember, during the whole process, your hand, no matter left or right, it should not be touching the bulb or the lower part down and uh, lower than the graduation mark because this one is temperature sensitive if you touch here the volume it may be expanding then the accuracy will be different so what you do right now okay you use a pipette filler tear up the solution for other than okay Reading the manuscripts, we have to do it by eye level. So you need to take out the whole setup, cover it with your index fingers, and slowly rotate the pipettes. So by doing this, you can see that the manuscripts are going down. When it touches the graduation mark, you can transfer the liquid to the conical flux. Remember the last job of the liquid from the pipette, you should not use the pipette to blow it up. So what you need to do is to touch the tip of the pipette to the surface of the liquid, like this. After that, you can clamp the pipette onto the clamp again. So when both liquid ready, what you need right now is to add a suitable indicator. Right. During SPA, you're going to provide two indicators. One is Miva Orange, one is Phenophilic. As this one, we are using nitric acid titrate against the sodium carbonate, which is a weak base. So we are going to use Miva Orange. So, for any indicator, remember, okay, we just need one or two drops will be good enough. But not the whole drop, okay, remember, just one drop like this. If you find that the color is not intense enough, you may add another drop, but normally one drop will be good enough. If this color is too intense, it will be quite difficult for you to observe the color change. <laughs> Okay. Remember, before you start the titration, you have to check the initial readings. Right. After that, you have to put down the readings onto the worksheets. Now, put the conical flask okay, right, in positions. 
you should notice that okay, the tape okay, it will be on your right hand side. Right? You're going to use your left hand to control the tape. So let's say if this one is to be red, your hand it will be like this, clamping on it, just like clamp and control the tape on the right hand side. What is the function of the right hand side? Or okay, your left right hand. Your right hand is used to swallow the solutions, to mix the solution when you add the titrate into it. So both hands have to work together. So when you add the solution into it, remember not the, only the left hand adding the solution, right hand and resting right here. You should do it together like this. When you add the solutions into the uh, when you add the titrant into the solutions, you'll find that the color will change. Right now the color is yellow in color, but when the exit runs into it, there is slightly change into pink. But this color, the pink color, will very quickly change back to yellow. The time for changing back the color back to yellow it will be very short at the beginning. But at a later part when the end point is approached, you'll find that the color it will take a longer time to approach to change back to yellow. So at that time we will know that the end point is approaching. What you need to do at that time it will be adding the solutions slower, drop by drop, by controlling the tape. So right now we're going to add the solution into it. Sometimes the titrant may be get into the inner wall of the conical flux. When that situation happens, what you need to do, you need to use a deionized water from the wash bottle. You have to rinse the solutions into the conical flux. After that, you can continue all the titration. So right now it's very close to the end point. We have to add very slowly into it. When you suspect this color is very close to orange, well, I will suggest you first take the reading flux. Okay, because sometimes it will be very sensitive, and other drops it may make it turn into pink. So therefore, this one is slightly close to orange color, if you can see. Okay, and then next, we will try to add another drop, see whether it will turn into pink or not, or a better color. So seems that this color, okay, it will be better. So we'll try to take this one as the end point and then we'll read the reading and take the readings away on the worksheets. So the color you're expecting, it will be orange in color. Okay, so it will be like this. Okay.